If you're looking for a place to hunt and you don't know how to go about it, I'm here to help. Cold contact or first contact, whether that be in business, meeting new friends for the first time, or in this case, hunting, can be kind of awkward. Having conversations with people that you've just met does not always come easily for everyone. Your palms sweat, you stumble over your words, or you think the worst case scenario so you don't even try. Well, that's not gonna do. Let me share with you some helpful tips and strategies so that you feel prepared when you go and ask for permission for hunting. Number one, you need to figure out where to hunt. You can figure this out by talking to other hunters and getting some input as to where they have had success hunting. You could take a drive in the early morning or the early evening and do some car scouting. You could do some research, figure out where mule deer or whitetail or elk or moose or whatever it is that you are hunting, where do they live? You could take a look at a topograph. <sighs> what topography do they feed on? What topography do they rest on? So take a look at a map so you have a better idea of the area they would be. Or you can be inspired by watching YouTubers and if they've done a really cool hunt in Alabama or some crazy place, then that might be an inspiration to you to even leave your comfort zone and go on an adventure hunt. Now that you have an idea of where to hunt, what's next? Contact, the most dreaded part of this whole video. But it doesn't have to be because you are gonna be prepared. That leads us to number two, prep your info. You can do this on a recipe card, a piece of paper, write it up on your laptop. It doesn't matter how you do it, it matters that you do it. What you're gonna to want to write down is your name, your phone number, what you're gonna be hunting, when you're gonna be hunting it, why you're gonna be hunting, no, not that one, who you're gonna go with, what you're gonna be driving and the license plate number of that vehicle, maybe a little bit of your hunting history, and absolutely a thank you. If you have this prepped and ready, then it won't be a scramble for the landowners to try and find you a piece of paper and a pen. For Leanne and I, when we went hunting this last year, we did not prepare. So we were sitting in my vehicle before we went to talk to people and we were writing out like 20, 30 recipe cards. If you want to have wrist problems or numb fingers, do that. That's great. Number three is talk to people early. Don't wait until there's one week before hunting sees because they might have already given permission to other people. You don't wanna miss out on a great opportunity and people might be less inclined to let you on their land with such short notice. Not only do we go talk to people in person, but we also make some phone calls. We have friends who have family or know people in certain areas of Saskatchewan. So we get their numbers from them. We make cold calls and have great and awkward conversations. At least we have some guidelines in place so a conversation can start off a lot easier and hopefully get the permission we want. My recommendation is to start doing this in early spring, even going out and seeing if you can do some shed hunting on people's lands. Then they can get to know you a little bit better so you're not just this random stranger wanting to be on their land for hunting season. It's also a good idea to think of where you're going. So if you're talking to a bunch of farmers, you don't wanna go during seeding or harvest. They're gonna be the busiest. Pick a time that works best for the people that you're gonna be talking to. Last year, we talked to people around end of September when we were gonna go hunting in November. Some people were kind of surprised that we were talking to them so early, but they were also very grateful. Number four, keep a list. I cannot stress this enough. I love lists, but I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to this. I have names and numbers of people that said yes, people that said maybe, people that said no. Like I could probably make a whole spreadsheet out of this, which would probably be really helpful actually. But this way I can see really organized with where people's land is, what parcels of land are good or not good, and even what areas they have cows on or they're gonna be doing yada yada. In. I personally like to have a physical map in the vehicle with me and have it highlighted as to the locations we can go and have it highlighted in the locations that we can't go. That's really helpful for me to have a full on visual of what my options are. If you don't wanna do something like that, you can also use an app like iHunter or I think in the States it's Onyx. You can pay to purchase maps where you're going to be hunting. However, I don't know if you can mark whether they allow permission or don't allow permission. That might not be an option for you. One of the reasons why asking permission is such a big deal, especially here in Canada, the government has imposed a $25,000 fine on anyone that trespasses on someone else's land to hunt. I don't want to have to deal with that. So to make the best of this scenario, honor the law 
and honor the landowner. When it was time for us to go on our hunting trip, we touched base with our contacts that we had, let them know that we were in the area. It was great. They were happy to have us. And some of them even offered that if we needed our animal to be retrieved from a certain area, that they would do it for us. Pretty awesome. Let's talk about number five, best first impressions. You only get one, so you might as well make it a good one. Remember, landowners owe you nothing. It is a blessing to be able to hunt on their land. Don't take that for granted. You know that you're amazing, and you know that you would take care of things, but they don't know you from a hole in the ground. And if they got gophers, they got lots of holes. Here are a few pointers for a good first impression from Mark Kenyon and I. Hmm, that sounds pretty good. Mark Kenyon and I, call me. Dress well, not fancy or dirty, but clean and comfortable. Think about who you're going to talk to. Go during the day to talk to people, but not during mealtime. If you're gonna go on the weekends, midday is better. As you go up to their door, give a good knock and then back away from the door to give them space to open it. And don't forget to smile if that's your thing. Offer a handshake or a wave, depending on how comfortable you are, and introduce yourself. Here's a suggested conversation that you can have, but please put this in your own words. You don't have to copy this word for word, but if you want to copy it word for word, I will leave it down in the description below. Hi, my name is blank. I'm from blank. Sorry to interrupt your afternoon, but I have seen many animals, whatever type you're hunting, in your area and I'm looking for a spot to rifle hunt this season. I was curious if you allow folks to hunt on your land. Now their answer could be yes, and if it's a no, ask them if they would know anyone that it would be worth checking in with. You can end with, thanks so much for your time, I hope you have a great day. Upon your next conversation with who they recommend to you, it could go something like this. Hi, I'm blank, and I was just talking to blank, and they recommended that I stop by here. If all goes well and they give you permission, then ask any other pertinent questions that you might have. Are ATVs allowed? Or if there's any specific requests that they would want with you being on their land, gates, animals, anything like that. And the best thing that you can do to prepare for all of this conversation that is the scariest thing in life in this moment is to number six, practice. Being social and stepping outside of your comfort zone may not be your cup of tea, ever and that's okay, but it is totally worth it, especially if you can make great connections with people and hunt on their land and then bring something home to fill your freezer with. I know it's not easy, but it is definitely worth it, especially if you get to fill your tags. So take some time and practice. The more you do it, the easier it will get, even if you need to do it in the mirror or to a friend or family member to get the jitters out. This allows you to be more calm when you go into those situations that are a little bit more uneasy. I have done this lots of times, whether it's in person or on the phone, and I still get sweaty palms, maybe some butterflies in my stomach, and imposing thoughts making me think that they're just gonna say no. I'm not one of those people that love conflict in any way, so it makes me a little bit hesitant to even ask. Let me leave you with this thought from Franklin D. Roosevelt. He said, Courage is not the absence of fear, but the assessment that there is something else more important than fear. This obviously can apply in so many different areas of our lives, but I wanna encourage you to be brave, be bold, to step outside your comfort zone and make contacts with people. Because nine times out of 10, it's gonna be okay. You always have a greater chance of hearing yes if you ask. I hope this video was helpful and I cannot wait to hear in the comments how this went for you. Just remember, I am rooting for you and I'll catch you next time.